We're going to get started. Good morning, everybody. I'm Barbara DeGraff, your learning community facilitator for our day of self-care or morning of self-care. And we need self-care here right now. We're like feeling it. We're feeling it. So welcome, everybody. Let's see. Let's see if our slides move. Should I try again? Yay! I went too many, of course. Okay, so our topic for today, as we know, best practices in trauma-informed care. And we're working together. We're going to look at programs and services that are used in peer support programs in behavioral health, as well as um, self-care for ourselves that support our resilience. We're going to have fun today. Damn it. <laughs> that was what my mother. That's right. That's what my mother used to say to me. You're going to have fun. Um, so we have three speakers today. We're going to do a little bit, um, oh, well, a little bit of a different order. Um, we have Dodie Shepard, who's coming to us remotely from Colorado, and she is going to talk at length about self-care. And there's material in your packet. Um, from Doty that you're going to be referring to, okay? So I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Vanessa, who's here in the room. Hi, Vanessa Compton, Amador County. Vanessa is going to go last because uh, Skylar Bright, hi, Skylar. She can wave to us. Skylar is up in Nevada City where, unfortunately, she has been having some issues. She doesn't have power. So she's on a hot spot on her cell phone. So we're going to see how that works. And um, so we're going to have Skylar go second. OK, so a little bit of a change in our agenda. But we're, we have some great, great speakers. Um, once again, you all know strategies. And some of you are new. Some of you are not as familiar with our programs and services. But our job is to elevate the field to help strengthen families by elevating the professionals in the field. Okay. Pardon me if I go a little fast. First of all, I've got that East Coast problem. And second of all, we're a little behind. I apologize for that. So does, is everybody on this today here and in the, uh, in the remote sites and online signed up for our strategies emails? Does everybody get our strategies emails? Everybody, yay, get your strategies emails. Really important to sign up on the strategies website. Make sure that you learn about all the offerings that we have. We have um, everything is free. We have trainings. We have webinars. And we have, as today, learning communities. And we also have great resources. So we have a resource page with lots of building resilient community information. Um, and please subscribe to the Strategies YouTube channel, where we post all of our learning communities as well as all of our webinars. So it's a great resource uh, for you that you can use in your um, agencies. Um, also, if you want to request a group training, we do look for 20 people. Um, we hope to get 20 at least, a little bit more, because we do have drop off. So we hope sometimes to get 25 to 30 people signed up. But we have a whole lot of offerings. Again, all of our offerings are free. And that is because we are funded 100% by Office of Child Abuse Prevention and La Fatima. She's here in the room. Yay, thank you, OCAP. <laughs> and everything's offered for free to the community. So we're very, very happy about that. If you use social media, please feel free, post. It's a way to share and get the word out about our learning communities. I hope to start on time. I apologize we didn't. We'll still work to end on time to make up our time. Um, I hope everybody can participate. Um, one of the things, I don't build breaks in. So please, in this self-care um, learning community, practice self-care. Feel free to get up, use the restrooms. While the preschool is in session, we do need to use, everybody uses the men's room. But I don't see any men here the unicorns in the room, right? So I have no men here in the in Jackson. Um, so please use the men's room. And um, that will be most of the morning, because I think the preschool ends at 
maybe noon or something like that. Noon, okay. All right. And then of course, silence your cell phones, but have them on vibrate so that if you have something that you're worried about, you can get that message. <clears throat> so uh, on your tables, there is a knowledge to action brief as well as um, at the remote sites, and it's also for our online participants. This describes what a learning community is. I don't, I'm trying to, I'm trying not to kill so many trees. So for those of you that are repeaters, I didn't make this again and again, but I do have it for our new folks. Learning communities are a little bit different than trainings in that we try to bring together groups of people that are interested in similar topics but bring different perspectives to the topic. And the core piece of the learning community is that we try to um, give you ample time to network with your peers, which most people, when they, when they evaluate the learning communities, say is one of the best parts of the whole day, is when they can network with each other. And this is um, this slide. In this slide, we try to depict this is your learning community. We have an evaluation. It's in your packet. It's handout number two. We hope you'll fill it out. Let us know how you feel. I am your learning community facilitator, so feel free to share comments on how I can improve this day for you. It's really important to us. But also, one of the things that we're hoping you'll think about is. Who are other folks you can bring to the learning community to help enhance the experience here as well as help you do your work? So we looked at um, you know, perhaps some, for some of our future ones that are coming in 2020, maybe some elected officials that you know may want to come, um, board member, maybe your supervisor, the individuals and families that you work with, um, community partners, co-workers, and then anyone else you can think of, local residents, we would like to get the voices of our families that we serve and our youth that we serve as well in the learning community. So please, please think about that. It's, this is your learning community. So for, the, for, our, for this uh, fiscal year, we're focusing on uh, trauma-informed care best practices. That was September's and November's learning community. And then in the next fiscal year, we're going to be looking at building resilient communities. And we're going to look at identifying rural policies to improve housing affordability and accessibility. And we're going to look at, and that will be in February, and then in May, we're going to talk about expanding technology in rural, rural communities. Because we've talked a lot about how we can use technology, but one of the things we have to do is make sure it's accessible to people. Handout number three, which is in your packet, talks about the topic areas, gives you the dates, and since this is your learning community, think about who you can bring to the table. And feel free to share with me their email addresses, information, I'll reach out to them and we'll try to bring those folks in to make this as um, impactful as possible. Also on the table is a, um, again, trying not to kill trees, we talk about practice methods, which Judy Sherman is here and she brought you some um, uh, family resource center, let me steal that, no, no, thank you. Um, the Vehicles for Change monographs, the original and an updated version that talk about how you can become more effective in your work. And one of the things you can really think about, and we're, we're going to think about it today when it comes to self-care, how can we, wh what are the areas that we're trying to work with? Yes, we want to work with our, within ourselves, and we want to utilize these self-care methods to make ourselves more effective with the families we serve and our own families and in our lives, but also, how do we bring these things to the agencies? How do we bring them to our communities? How do we bring these practices out? And, and the practice areas are one way for you to kind of frame where do you work? What is your area of impact? Are you an executive director? Are you a direct care service worker? Are you a community member? So as you think about these things that we talk about today, think about all the different areas that you can work in. And today we're going to work on these objectives. Basically, we want to bring, we want to learn about self-care practice programs that we can bring to our staff our, and, and our program participants. 
We want to think about things that we can achieve. So we try to make it as um, concrete as possible. And we're going to look at you and your own self-care, and then we're going to try to apply that out to the agency and the broader community. Um, we're going to try to commit to two or three self-care uh, practices that we want to integrate into our own day. Um, we'll do, talk about that in a moment. And then we're going to talk about concepts that you can apply locally in your agencies. And everything is pretty much free. It's just a matter of having that uh, mindful, that thinking, that thought process of bringing these practices to your work. And then this will be our flow for the day. Again, we're going to change slightly. Please feel free to get up at any time and grab snacks. At about 11 o'clock here in Jackson, we're going to put out some heavier snacks. So be excited about that. And that'll keep you going through uh, the networking, OK? Because we really want you to stay. We're going to adjourn about 12.30. Um, that's our plan for the day. So I know that does eat into your lunch hour. So, but feel free to get up, use the restrooms, grab food, et cetera. It's there for you. And you have an agenda in your packet, handout five. And these are our participants. So we have the hub. Yay, hub. We have Loyalton, Sierra County. Oh, we have Ty Tammy, how are you? We have Inyo County, Bishop. Where's, hi Inyo, where are you? Mammoth Lakes, Mo Mono County. Courtney Powell is our remote host. Hi, Courtney. Welcome. Welcome to our, our family. And then we have we had about 30 online participants. How many? 29 online participants through, from throughout the state. So welcome online participants. We want you to feel a part of this. Feel free to use the um, hands. Uh, raise your hand if you want to make a comment and use the chat box. We have Shane Meserve. Say hi, Shane. Shane is one of my team members, and she is I'm going to be monitoring the chat box and Carrie Collins, who is the fabulous person who has been working with all of our speakers to make sure that you can hear them and they can hear me. All right. So now we're going to do introductions and we're going to take, say, what, how much time do we have? How am I doing? Okay, pretty good. We're going to take three minutes. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to find somebody you don't know. I'd like you if, you, if that's possible, if it isn't, find somebody you know a little less, somebody you want to get to know, and think about sharing your favorite way to take care of yourself. Share one, two things, and then even if it's something you don't get to do regularly, okay? So we're going to do three minutes. We're going to start now, and our, our um, folks in the uh, remote sites as well, if they want to do that, um, or they want to do any other kind of an introduction. Three minutes. All right.
We're going to... We're going to come back together in one minute. All right, we're going to come back together. Did anybody learn anything that they are like, wow, I want to do myself? I learned something really cool. Yes? We're going to come back together as a team. You're all by yourself over there. Do you want to? You're okay? Okay. Oh, you got somebody else. Okay. Anybody learn anything? Anybody learn anything that they want to now practice themselves? Anybody? Anybody learn something they would like to practice themselves? <laughs> Why was that? Why was that? So things we can't share with the group. Okay, that's cool. I get it. I get it. How about in our remote sites? Did you guys discuss anything? Anybody sit any anybody online give any info or Yes, Melody Easton. She likes to exercise and read and drink wine. And drink wine. All right. I'm with you. I'm with you on all three of those things. All right. All right. All righty. Well, I think at this point we are ready, I hope. Are we ready for Dodi? So Dodi Shepard from Resilient Colorado in your packets, you have a copy of her slides. We are, have been having a few issues with her slides, but you do have a copy of her slides. It is handout number six, I believe. So if you check your, your handout number six. Can anybody Dodie. hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear yes, we you. Can. You sound great. Oh, okay. Um, is anybody going to make me the presenter, or are you just going to try to do this for me? We're going to try to make that? you the presenter. Do you want to close that? Um, if you can. Okay. Remember, there's a, a bit of a lag, so. Let me know. If you see oh. anything helpful. Yes. We, <laughs> right now. We see a beautiful mountain. There yeah, we you see go. It. There it is. There are your slides. And we see Dodie. Dodie is up there. Hi, Dodie. Hello, everyone. Can everybody see and hear okay? I hope so, because I can't see or hear anyone. We hear you and see you. You hear me. Okay. And see you. Then yep. let's, okay, great. Let's get started. Um, hope I did just switch slides, so hopefully it switched with me. Are we, is the tech working? Not yet, Dodie. Just Not remember yet. there there is a lag, so be, be patient. Oh. Practice. Okay. But it it's, it's a oh, bigger yeah, lag yes. than we have had in yeah. the past. Okay. Well, how about we get started with a centering exercise? I, I know I could use it. <laughs> um, so this, this is a very simple exercise. It's, I just call it three breaths. And I just invite you to get comfortable in your seats. 
And it, it really helps if you can get your hips equally balanced in your chair. If you can't, that's okay. But if you can do that, what it does is it tells our brain that we're safe and that we're grounded. And it even helps if you push your toes into the floor and just kind of sit square in your chair. And as it's comfortable for you, either close your eyes or just allow your gaze to drift downward and uh, maybe look at the floor. And your hands can be anywhere you're comfortable. Um, tops of your thighs are a good, good place. So let's take in three breaths. And with the first breath, just be mindful of how it feels to breathe in and out. And with the second breath, check in with your body. Breathe in. And notice any areas of tension. Just acknowledging that is helpful. And with the third breath, ask yourself, what is important now? And as you're ready, I invite you to release this practice. So if you are anything like I am, when I think about mindfulness or meditation or self-care, this is where my mind goes. And hopefully you see a slide right now about inner peace. Um, I'm going to keep advancing slides, and if, if it's not working, then will somebody interrupt me and maybe take over the slides from me? Yes. Okay. I'm on a self-care slide now. Yep, perfect. And um, the joke of this slide is that um, many of us have a rather hallmark idea of what self-care is. Um, I think that uh, there's some things in our culture that encourage that idea, but um, when we have this idea that self-care costs a lot of money, um, it's, it's something that only certain people are privileged to, then self-care begins to exist outside of ourselves, and that just isn't helpful, um, and it certainly isn't equitable. So I have a broad definition of self-care in your uh, packets that Barb sent out. There is a six pillar of self-care so that, you know, depending on the day, sometimes just taking a shower can be an act of self-care. So that's a really helpful resource. Um, we're not going to go into it uh, especially detailed today, but I just wanted to reference it. But self-care is not always easy or fun or sexy. Sometimes um, it's making a difficult decision to let go of a friendship that's unhealthy or live on a budget or getting up 30 minutes early because your doctor says that your heart needs exercise. And I also don't feel like resilience is um, the same for all of us. I feel like it's very unique to each one of us. And so we really need to find the self-care practices and the resilience practices that work the best for us individually. And then it, it's also always um, important to remember that self-care needs to be incredibly culturally relevant. So there may be another culture that um, does something that is super important that we respect and acknowledge what's going on um, in, with those audiences. So when we think about self-care, it's, it's important to realize that this is not about being selfish. And in fact, I feel strongly that as leaders of your different agencies, if we really want them to be strong and healthy and trauma-informed and resilient, we have to take our self-care very seriously. And we really need to lead the charge on that because if we don't, do that, then it's going to be difficult for those that um, rely on us for a paycheck, for example, or have some kind of, like if we have some kind of leadership over them, 
it's going to be really difficult for them to take their self-care seriously if we aren't doing it. Um, and then I also like to integrate here just the idea of do no harm. And we are in an, or, uh, an agency, we're in the kind of work that is incredibly taxing on us emotionally. And the idea of do no harm is the first rule of medical medicine, but it really should be the first rule of everything that we're doing. And that includes doing harm to ourselves, and to our families, our jobs are really not supposed to make those things harder, but I know in reality, they often do. So hopefully you can see a self-compassion slide now. Um, I was gonna click through each of these points separately, but I'm having such technical issues with the power outages that I thought it'd be easier if we did this separately. I mean, uh, excuse me, all together. So, um, the important thing to note with this self-compassion is that these are the, the items on this list are the exact same items that we need for empathy. So sometimes we have trouble giving ourselves the self-care that we need, but this list is the exact same thing we need to have empathy with the people that we're interacting with every single day. Um, so just keep that in mind. As staff leaders, we have to take that lead because we can't lead where we don't dwell. So the first point there, listen to your body. Your body's always present in real time and it doesn't lie to you. Um, that's why in that breathing exercise, I asked you to just check in with your body because just just acknowledging, gosh, my hips don't feel very well or my, my neck feels tight, that actually begins to calm down our limbic system when um, we're having issues because our body doesn't want us to ignore those. Um, non-judgmental. Being non-judgmental really is a self-care practice because when we get judgy, we get triggered. And when we get triggered, we kick ourselves into our fight, flight, or freeze response. And that brain science part of all of that I'm talking about is very critical to um, self-care. So we know that we're getting judgy when we start talking about, well, we should just. So if you if you use the word should or just, a lot of times those those are kind of judgment type words. Um, or things like other people have it worse, or I shouldn't feel badly because, you know, some people don't have food to eat, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that really puts us into our fight, flight, or freeze response. And I'm trying to keep us up here in our prefrontal cortex. So perspective taking. Reflect on, gosh, why does your body feel this way? Did you not get a good night's rest? Do you maybe need a new pillow? Um, have you just had a really stressful weekend? Whatever the case may be. N naming the feeling. It's, fun it, it's a fundamental tool of mindfulness to identify our feelings. And the data shows that when we just acknowledge it. It literally calms down the limbic system and the amygdala specifically. And they can see this on functional MRIs. And um, there was a 2007 study by Lieberman, if you want to dig deeper into that. But this is, um, this is not just a woo-woo kind of thing. That's my point that I'm trying to get. Um, when we validate our feelings, we honor our experiences. We honor the human condition and self acceptance. And again, remember, we can't lead where we don't dwell. So you, I hope you can see how these self-compassion steps lead very closely to empathy with others. And stay connected. Honor your needs and uh, don't just check out by escaping into your favorite uh, mood-altering drug of, of choice. That, that can be obviously some kind of substance. Uh, we also call it Netflix or Facebook. Um, things like that. So I just want to take a second and check in. Is everybody still hearing me and are the slides working? Yes. Hear you and the slides are working. You're loud and clear. Um, can I just interrupt Excellent. one I second? Um, Please. 
Dodie, I forgot to uh, mention something to everyone, and I apologize. So Dodie had sent a lot of information to us, and I emailed it out to folks that had pre-registered. Um, you will all receive it yet again in an email after the event is over. But I just want to share that I know at the remote sites, um, we printed out a few extras of Dodie's massive amount of resources on self-care um, handouts. They're labeled eight all the way through, I think, 17. So there's a sample at your table for you to look at, and then you can decide what it is you want to print out or utilize. But I know, Dodi, you'd said that um, in particular, handout number 13, which is about the organizational self-care checklist, evaluating yeah. your organization, oh, okay. self-care practices. She's going to talk about that one. So we have that one out separately. Yeah. So for our remote I'm sites as well. I'm going to most of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, but thanks, Barb. Thank you, Dodie. Um, Sorry about that. Yeah, but yeah you sound it's, great. Everything's no, great. It's okay. Just please interrupt me if, <laughs> if we go dark here, because I will not know, and I'll just be sitting here talking to myself. Yeah, you'll be there for the, you'll be there for the next <laughs> 10 years. No, we'll let you know. Don't worry. Excellent. Bye. All okay. right. So. Um, when we talk about boundaries, what we typically think about is interpersonal boundaries, the boundaries that exist between people. And things like unresolved trauma and compassion fatigue can impact our ability to maintain those boundaries. Like you may be a person who typically is, is a pretty strong, strongly boundaried person or you have strong boundaries. But gosh, when we're going through stuff, that th we can lose that ability temporarily. Um, and also some of us just have grown up in families where boundaries are not encouraged or even allowed. Um, the, the truth is, is we lose our filter when we get stressed out and we do things that we wouldn't ordinarily do. What I specifically wanna talk about today is not something I feel like is talked about a lot in our, in our work. And this is intrapersonal boundaries. These are a little different. Intrapersonal boundaries are a protective practice. And so rather than between us and other people, these are boundaries that exist within ourselves where we decide, thank you, how much of someone else's pain or stress or chaos or energy we're going to carry. Um, we all know what it's like to walk through a day and we just, the day has just been so heavy and so many things have been loaded up on us throughout the day that we get home and we're not our best. We're not our best for our families or our pets or whatever, whoever is there to greet us. Um, and we really can do some things to protect our intrapersonal boundaries that can prevent compassion fatigue and help us with secondary trauma and uh, burnout and prevent burnout. So intrapersonal boundaries are not how other people treat me. It's how I treat me. I'm responsible for my own well-being and, and happiness. And how do I value and care for and take care of my own soul and heart and mind and body? And there are, if you are someone that is working in a church, there are all kinds of different descriptors that you can use for what fits best in your spiritual space. But this is, this involves our spiritual space, our mental space, or our emotional skin, so to speak. Um, and sometimes the reason we're exhausted has nothing to do with what's going on in our life so much as it has to do with carrying emotional baggage that isn't ours. And so these emotional, um, these interpersonal boundaries, we can think of them as walls, but we really have control over them. We, these walls can be rigid or semi-permeable, semi or um, sometimes we don't, want them there at all. And, and we get to call the shots. That's kind of where, where I'm going with that. This next slide comes from Al-Anon and it's about, you know, taking on stuff that is not ours. And I think it's a helpful quote. I didn't cause it. I can't control it. I can't cure it. And then I was in a training with a woman that said, 
so don't own it. And this is just like a helpful reminder. If you want something a little more cheeky, one that comes through my brain at least a couple times a week is not my circus, not my monkey. Um, I don't so know if that moving... slide showed up, Jody. Uh, okay, oh, here it is. Thing. Okay, we got it now. I didn't cause I'm it, actually... I can't control it, and I can't cure it. Okay, I'm actually two slides forward now, but um, I'm moving into the self-care part of our time together. Um, and what I'm trying to advocate for and what we're actually going to take some time for today as, as we're all together here physically and virtually, depending on where you are, is we're going to make a self-care plan for ourselves. And um, when we have a plan, it makes it easier for us to not blow it off and make that a priority. So this is one of my favorite quotes about self-care, and I'm just going to read it in case the slides aren't lining up properly. It's, it's from Brene Brown, and it says, it takes courage to say yes, to rest and play in a culture where exhaustion is seen as a status symbol. And then um, I am going to move to the self-care part of our time now. So if you have this handout, it will say at the top, prevention and in the moment and aftercare. And if you do not have this handout, just grab a blank piece of paper and make three columns. In the left they column, should, right, prevention. They should have it. It's, the, um, it's handout number seven. Oh, let me go over here. So for... For our remote sites and our online folks, it's handout number seven, prepare in the moment, metabolize. Yours is a little bit different. Ours says prepare in the moment, metabolize. Yours says prevention in the moment, aftercare. That's okay. Both work. Okay. Grab the words that make the most sense to you. I'm sorry I didn't line up what I sent with what's on my slide. but Okay. Um, okay. But this, that's basically we're what gonna, we're going to work on. We're, yeah, we're going to fill this out together, and I'm thinking, Barb, we'll take about four minutes for each column, but because okay. you're there and you can see physically how long people need, um, will you lead that, that kind of time? Because I, I have nothing to go on here. Okay. Um, to start, I want to ha maybe have a discussion or just brainstorm what are some things that bring you joy? And write down those things in your first column. These are things that just fill your bucket. Um, and then let's take, let's check in about 20 minutes after the hour. That'll be in about four minutes and see okay. if that's a good spot to move forward. for like 20 more minutes. Awesome.
Pretty good here, Dodie. Okay. Um, awesome. So then I'm going to give you another idea to, of something to add to your um, first, yeah. we're still in the first column. These are uh -huh. things that you need to have a good day. So for some folks, that means music. For other folks, they just need some quiet time. Um, maybe it's a shower. So add things when you prepare for your day. Um, add those to your first column. I just did that. So things you need to prepare for your day. Yeah, this is, you know, the stress is coming and you know it's coming. So how can you set yourself up well? Um, you know, for some, these are preventative things that you can do. For example, like I will carry around these little stones. Some people call them a worry stone. I just like, you know, kind of rubbing on it. It makes, it kind of gives me something to do with some anxious energy. Um, a preventative strategy, you can actually think of this as a self-care practice. Keep some snacks in your desk. Being hangry is not uh, useful. <laughs> um, so if we're done with that part of our card. You feel uh, done? Card. Looks like it. Yes, looks good. Looks okay. like people are. So for the middle column, I'm going to talk about what I like to call rapid resets. And rapid resets, these are in the moment strategies that we can use. We've already been triggered into our stress response at this point, right? Um, <laughs> when we get triggered, we can like do all the prevention and stuff still happens. And now what do we do? In the moment, rapid resets are very fast things that anyone can do anywhere at any time. This is not like 30 minutes of meditation. This is, you've got to keep your cool and what are you going to do? Um, when we get triggered, a lot of times it comes in through our senses. We hear a song or we smell a perfume and it reminds us of something. And sometimes we've just like gone down the deep end with memories or something. Um, and it doesn't always have to be a bad memory either. Um, but we can also use our senses to pull ourselves back into the present moment and ground ourselves. And these are kind of stealthy strategies. People don't have to know that you're doing them. And that's one of the beauties of them. So I'm going to practice a couple. It'll be a little odd to do um, remotely. But this first one is very common. You might have heard of it. A five, four, three, two, one. Name five things you can see. So at my desk right now, I can see my phone and a coffee that a colleague just brought me and a computer and some pens, and I can see my computer. Um, four things that I can touch or feel, and I have all kinds of stuff sitting at my desk here. I can touch the metal on my computer and I can feel how warm that is. I can feel my heartbeat. I can push my feet into the ground and, and feel that pressure. I can hear folks kind of chattering in the remote site. <laughs> I can hear people in the other office making office -y sounds, and I can hear a fan. What can I smell? I can smell my coffee. Wake up and smell the And I think, I think I'm smelling like a heater, and I can <laughs> taste this coffee again. So when we do those kinds of activities, they seem ridiculously simple and like they wouldn't help. When this is really helpful is when you're so stressed out, you can't tell yourself to breathe. Um, because when we, we can use our breath to bring ourselves out of our stress response, but when you're having a panic attack, for example, you can't control your breath. So, and the other thing that's nice about 54321 is you can teach this to a four-year-old you can do this over the phone. Um, I've used this over the phone with my teenagers when they've been having a hard time. So it's, it's very, very useful. And rapid resets are really simple because remember, you, you are 
you have been completely stressed into your stress response. So you can't do anything complicated, right? Um, the next one is four, seven, eight breathing. Again, super simple. We can all do this together for a couple of times. Breathe in through your nose for a count of four. So first blow all your air out so you can breathe in. Breathe in for four. Hold that for a count of seven. And breathe out through, ex through pursed lips for a count of eight. Breathe in for four. Hold that for a count of seven. And exhale for a count of eight. So this is super helpful. Like I will always do this one while I'm while I'm driving right before, like if I'm running late for an appointment and I feel myself getting amped up because I'm running late and I'm anxious, um, this really helps calm down. What, what's going on in the brain is when we breathe in, we activate our sympathetic nervous system. But when we breathe out, we activate our parasympathetic nervous system. So our, our prefrontal cortex gets activated when our exhale is longer than our inhale. That's why things like music, um, singing, and playing woodwind instruments that are connected to our breath are so relaxing because it's literally activating the part of our nervous system that is responsible for calming ourselves down. Um, and the, the business with the pursed lips is if you pay attention to what your body does when you're angry or stressed, you tend to do that anyway. You just, we aren't often aware of it. Um, so this next slide just gives you a bunch of rapid reset ideas. Again, these are very, very simple. Um, so I want, let's see. Yeah, let's, um, let's take another couple of minutes and work on that middle column now. And let's, I'm going to approximately, 30 minutes after the hour, but it may not take that long. So go ahead and work on your middle column now, and I'll leave this slide up if you want to grab any of these ideas.
Cody, I think we're pretty good with the um, the center, okay. the middle column. Um, yeah. Sweet. So I want to. Um, so the on the right hand column there it says mentally add a soundtrack. Um, if you are a person who thinks um, like some some people just think oh this is this would be a great soundtrack for this event that's happening right now. <clears throat> like if there's a, a scene in front of you and you can kind of make uh, think of a soundtrack that goes with the scene, that's what that mentally add a soundtrack uh, suggestion is about. And if if this scene were scored like a movie, what what song would we pick? Um, the idea with these rapid resets and even that five four three two one, this is hard work for your brain when you're in a stress response, it's really difficult for your brain to think, okay, what are five things I can see? What are four things I can touch? But that hard work for your brain gets you up into your prefrontal cortex and out of your limbic response. So that's the strategy here. Um, the next, I've got four slides here and hopefully they'll advance um, with us like helpfully. <laughs> Um, I'm, this is another in the moment strategy. Um, so this is, it's, it's also another rapid reset. This is called the shield technique. And what this technique is, is it's a way to help us not absorb the emotions of the person that's in front of us. So if a person is just venting in front of us and, um, what can we do to protect, again, intrapersonal boundaries? This is about utilizing the skill set of empathy instead of the feeling of empathy. Because if we just feel empathy for every person that crosses our path every single day, we're going to be emotionally just completely spent at the end of that day, end of that week, end of that month, et cetera. Um, and what this technique allows us to do is to sort of choose who are those core people in our life that I actually want to go into this feeling and feel them, feel this pain with them versus who are those people where I want to practice the skill set of empathy, but I, but I'm going to protect my own emotional reserves. So this is an exercise that happens in our mind. Um, if it's helpful, you can even think of it kind of like a game. I um, often think of the Star Trek or Star Wars metaphor both of them say when there's uh, an incoming issue, they'll say, shield up. And I have friends will, that when I'm walking into a situation where it might be difficult, they'll remind me, shield up. Um, so the idea is that you, you have a pretend shield, an imaginary shield in front of you. And um, Anytime you're with someone who has a lot of emotion, you imagine this shield or force, force field completely surrounding you. And it's helpful to imagine it about an arm's length out, but you can adjust that distance as you like. And your shield, again, is semi-permeable. You can choose what you allow in and what you don't. So if you think, if it, and it's also helpful to um, give your shield some texture and shape and color if that helps you. Um, but it can feel like if somebody's angry with you, that can feel like there's arrows coming at you. And the important thing is, is when that happens, you don't want to deflect those arrows back to the person. You want to picture them falling to the floor. Or sometimes it's just a huge emotional wash. Um, and that, that just washes right over your shield. You don't want to deflect these emotions back to the person because A, that's not empathetic. And B, that's going to put us into our fight, flight, or freeze response because, because that's what happens in our brain when we do that. So you can picture this as um, arrows or emotional waves, or it could feel like a fiery energy. I think my fire slide... Um, got deleted when I had to transfer this over. And then the other thing to realize is that you can extend your own um, positive energy through your shield um, and send light and love and kindness to that person, whatever that looks like for you or whatever's appropriate 
in that moment. So if the shield is a technique that you would like to experiment with, um, I'd encourage you to write that down on your in the middle column there on your sheet. And all of these rapid resets, the key to really making those work for you is to practice them when you're calm. Because when we practice these when we're calm, we literally lay in new neural pathways and strengthen other ones so that our brain gets better at getting us out of our uh, brainstem stress response and into our prefrontal cortex response. And then I'm also going to reflect how this works in my life. Um, so if I have a really stressful day coming up, depending on what, what it looks like, I might do one of two things. I might wear a shirt that is kind of soft and just feels comforting to me. That helps me. Um, that helps when I get to that rapid reset part. The other thing helps that helps with this shield technique, I need to do this before I get on an airplane or I go to Walmart. Both of those places, I'm really overstimulated in those places. And most of us in this work are very empathetic by nature. And so when we start being kind of sponges for everybody else's emotions, that gets, that's just a lot. It, it can be too much to bear. So I will wear a ball cap and that ball cap will remind me of I'm going to put my shield on and it's kind of my shield starts there and it. And so I do these things as a preventive measure um, ahead of time. I hope that's making some sense. But remember to practice these rapid resets when you're calm so that those tools are there for you when, when you need them, when you're triggered. So now we're going to move to the last column. And this is about metabolizing our stress hormones or uh, aftercare. And what I like to think of these as rituals of relief. And um, it's helpful to ritualize this practice because it's easier for a brain to remember. So for example, um, if you have a practice where you go home and you set down your computer and whatever your work things are, and you walk the dog, then that could be one of your rituals of relief, especially if you get intentional with your, um, with all of these practices that that really helps. Again, it helps our brain. So some examples of rituals of relief are um, change your clothes when you get home, or maybe you take a shower and literally wash off the day. For some people, they prefer to do that in the morning to set themselves up for the day. Whatever works best for you, think through that. Um, one of my favorites is if you have a commute that is pretty similar every day, find a landmark that's about halfway on your commute. It could be a building, it could be a tree, it could be a sign. But um, intentionally shift gears when you see that landmark. You might change the music that you're playing. Um, but what the idea here is, is that you, until you, like if you're on your way home, until you get to that landmark, you let yourself process through the day, but then you shift gears once you hear that, hit that landmark, so that you shift into your home mode or your family mode. Um, and then if you have, you can imagine carrying like, packages of stress that you've accumulated throughout the day. And you can literally just emotionally let those go on the roadside. And then on your way back to work in the morning, if you want to pick those packages up, you can. But the beautiful thing about this is often those problems that you decided to set down for eight to 10 hours, sometimes they solve themselves when we, when we just let them go for a little bit. Um, so Take a minute and um, think about your, what could be your rituals of relief um, and these things that our brains learn when we do over and over, this is me shifting gears into another mode. And you can have rituals of release at the end of the day. You can also have them at the end of the week or end of like a phase, like a quarter or something. So some of them can be bigger than, you know, I'm going to walk the dog.
it just it depends so pick uh again let's take a couple of minutes this won't take too long and fill in your third column and then we'll wrap up when we come back together so let's see it is uh let's say about 43 minutes after maybe okay and then Dodie, i just want to remind you about 10 45 um we're gonna we have to move on to our next presenter is that okay i'm almost done okay perfect thank you you bet <clears throat> So we're resetting our, our rituals of release. Yeah, this is the metabolized column. This it's is hard. the third column. And mm -hmm. what I what I forgot to say is that um, we we accumulate stress hormones throughout the day as we are um, going through our stressful lives, and so we need a way for that stress hormone to get metabolized. Um, otherwise, it just stays in our system, and it can result in all kinds of negative things. So that's that's why it says metabolize on your sheet. Mm -hmm. And then um, just give me a nod, Barb, and I will go through okay. the last couple of slides we have together. But I'll be done in five minutes easy. Okay. How do folks feel about the metabolizing part? Are you? Do you have a few ideas? So was, that was hard for me. I feel like I'm repeating yeah, a lot of the things. Okay. Well, let me um, let me go in and explain grounding, and then maybe that will help. Okay. So there's different kinds of grounding strategies. Um, there's mental strategies that we can use, and we've talked about a few of them. The shield is a mental strategy, right? We're focusing our mind. Um, physical is about focusing your senses and then there's soothing strategies like I, I gave the example of the worry stone or the soft shirt that's a soothing strategy um, so it's helpful to have all different kinds like the physical strategy is the, the ball cap or a favorite shirt things like that or maybe it's a cup of tea um, in your packets there's all a whole manner of self-care tips and you can fill in your cards if you're if you've got like one column that's looking a little bare you can add to it um and then what i've used with with students particularly but it works great with adults is i build kits that are around the same idea but it's a physical kit and you have instructions for how to do that in your uh handouts there but it's based on the same idea yeah. and it's all based around the core senses so you need something for each of your senses and, and that's handout, like that's see. handout 16 for folks that have them um, on their tables or um for the folks online or the remote sites it's um build a self-soothing sensory kit which has great ideas in it Okay, and then I want to leave us with one last mindfulness practice. Mm -hmm. And um, again, just get comfortable in your seat. This is called a head, heart, gut check in. This is really helpful when you have a decision that you need to make, um, or you just have a situation in your life that's just difficult. So um, take a moment and um, get comfortable, and then take a couple of deep. Slow conscious breaths as a way of gathering your awareness to this present moment. And take in a deep breath and bring to mind a decision that you need to make or a situation in your life. And now bring your awareness up to your head and it's really helpful to place your hand on your head. And with your awareness in your head, acknowledge what kinds of thoughts are present in relation to that situation. And breathe in. And as you breathe out, drop your awareness down to your heart. And it's helpful to place your hand over your heart. And take a moment to attend to what values you have in this situation. What do you care about most? 
heart and what is your deepest intention? And breathe in. And as you breathe out, drop your awareness down to your gut and you can place your hand over your abdomen and tune into any hunches, intuition, emotions that are present in relation to the current situation. And breathe in. And as you breathe out, collect all of this information and and in one slow, deep, conscious breath, breathe in and out and collect all this information from the body and the mind and the gut. And mentally ask yourself the question, what shall I do now? And listen for the answer. And as you're ready, you can open your eyes and release this practice. So, um, Barb, I don't have time to do this together, okay. but you might want, depending on how you want to end the day, this would mm -hmm. be a really good uh, thing to do at the end of the day today. What's the one thing you'll do tonight to take care of yourself and foster your own resilience? And then um, I'm just going to take 30 seconds and review. Barb already mentioned the uh, organizational self-care checklist. And there's a personal assessment and an organizational one. So I've tried really hard to give you resources. I tried really hard to give you resources. I tried really hard to give you resources that you can use personally and collectively with your groups. And there's more on than the one of them. So there's a personal one and an organizational one. It's on one. the table. There's there's mm -hmm. several guided yeah. meditation. These are all online. Yes, and in fact, if you um, let me go back. In case anybody didn't get Barb's oh. email, they're yes. at, I'll get some uh, there is a, there's a bit.ly link that you can go straight to my Google drive. It's at the bottom there where it's called, uh, Hand out there. Colorado self-care. And then there's also a not have exercise that's for it's mindful scheduling. There's 40 ways to integrate mindfulness into your I daily just, schedule. And um, just use any of these tools to improve your personal resilience and try to integrate some of them into your regular staff meeting. Um, and then reach out to me if you have any questions or uh, about anything. I'll run to the end now so you can see my uh, contact info again. Um, and thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Dodie. It's been helpful. Um, and I just want to share with everyone, so all of these resources, I didn't copy them all because it was so much paper, but I did email it to everyone. It's on for the online folks in their materials section, which we had a little glitch there and have resolved that. And then also at the remote sites, folks just um, printed out a couple of copies for you to just peruse but I will resend everything after the learning community. Okay. And remember the remember what works for one person might not work for another. So if you look at exactly. some of this, you're like, that's crazy. That's the reason I gave you so many resources is because we're all different. And so that's uh, just keep that in mind as you look at all of those. Take what okay. works. Thank you so much, Dodi. And we all got calm Back. after all the stress of the morning of the technology. We, technology is wonderful. It's stressful. You know, it's just, it's always, there's always some glitch. With that, um, Skylar Bright is with us. And Skylar is a certified yoga therapist. And um, she's going to provide us with some very concrete ideas for self-care. And um, thank you, Skylar, for being so patient. And thank you, Vanessa, for being flexible and letting us switch um, folks. So we should be able to hear Skylar. Want to say hello to everyone? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? There we go. Yes, we hear you loud and clear. And um, you are going to need to put your uh, slides up. They are. Yes, you're going to make Skylar the presenter. Do you see them? It's 
Not yet. It's coming your way. You're you're going to be the presenter in a in a few seconds. Okay. okay. Can you see now? Yes, yes. We can see them. Fabulous. See you here. Excellent. I'm going to make well, them a little hello, bit. everybody. There we go. Hi, Skylar. <laughs> I want to thank you, uh, Dodi, so much for a fabulous presentation. I'm really glad I got to to see that, and it was just so full of wonderful ideas. And um, yeah, thank you, and thank you, Vanessa, also for being flexible. So um, I'm with my uh, power <laughs> experience here, and uh, thanks, Barbara, for providing this opportunity for me to share a little bit of what I know. So. My name is Skylar Bright, and as she said, I am a uh, yoga therapist and lots more. Just a little bit about me. I do, uh, I guess I'll go back to this first. Um, I currently teach at places like Wayne Brown Correctional Facility, um, Community Beyond Violence, uh, SNCS, uh, Sierra Nevada Children's Services. I'm part of the Trauma Informed Care teaching uh, group, uh, so there's only two of us, but uh, as well as Earl Jameson, and I have taught at places like, uh, Earl Jameson is a, a school for kids with excessive truancies who are frequently, have frequently more incidents of trauma, as well as Carice Youth Center, Wards of the Court, and I have also worked with Sierra County Behavioral Health and Sierra County Drug Court. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> um, I also teach training for professionals, that is mental health professionals, as well as yoga teachers and uh, other, other sorts of people, providers who, who work with the general public. So going into the importance of self-care for caregivers, uh, it's so important primarily because kids watch. They don't always do what we ask them to, but they watch. And that makes us the model of our the kids that we are working with uh, we're their model for self-care for their self-care for the rest of their life and if we are feeling stress no matter how good our intentions we are just giving stress to everyone we contact which has the potential to hurt and even traumatize kids for life and the counter to that is if we feel well nourished we naturally have the energy to nurture so what I'm going to be covering today briefly are meals, sleep, and daily activities. And that helps us build a sense of balance and ultimately resilience so that we can have um, more of that bubble around us as, uh, as Dodie was talking about the interpersonal boundaries and the shield so that stuff can just roll off us, sort of like a container for the world's turbulence around us, and sometimes even for our own inner turbulence to prevent the rollover of, uh, of all of our internal emotions. So um, starting with meals, I'd like to just invite you to envision what it would take to really, if you don't, currently eat three meals a day at regular times of day of organic, whole, and seasonal food. Now, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that that is a barrier for a lot of the people that you work with because obviously organic food is not as uh, inexpensive. <laughs> and also, uh, however, though, you can also inspire people to plant gardens, especially because that is almost free. I mean, you need water and you need to, the practice of, of watering, but everybody knows that a tomato from your own garden tastes so much better than anything you could ever buy in a store. So, uh, and you know, just eating what whole and seasonal helps our gut to maintain a better, better microbial balance. Eaten mindfully, uh, I'd like to just invite this thought of single tasking as opposed to multitasking we have been taught to value that and moms certainly and caregivers kind of have to do that and mindfulness 
one definition of that is single tasking. So even though there's so many great mindfulness activities, the thing that I'd like to plant, the seed that I'd like to plant for you today is anything besides the three breaths, um, we'd like to try to take that around our meal. That's going to have the biggest effect and be most relevant ultimately in our health. If we can eat mindfully, then we can have a lot better health a lot longer. And I'd like to invite you to consider making lunch your largest meal. When the sun is highest in the sky is typically when we have the most acids and enzymes available to digest our food. And um, eating the last meal before three hours before bed is another uh, piece to that. So I just want to tell you a brief story before moving on about that. One of my teachers had, was working with a client who couldn't integrate any other recommendation but this one. And he was grossly, morbidly obese, like 400 pounds. And he, he couldn't integrate any other uh, recommendation and he lost a hundred pounds just doing this one thing. So uh, that's not to, that means it can't be understated really how important that is. So a few more pieces about eating mindfully, um, maybe taking three breaths or banking your food before consuming it. That just invites you to slow down a little bit instead of wolfing it down, which will lead to chewing more thoroughly. And that's uh, is maybe the most important thing to, to favor what we're taking in. And, and then sipping warm water during meals is an excellent idea instead of ice water, especially during the winter. But um, basically because our, our body has to moderate and regulate in order to maintain homeostasis so that if we take in cold water, we, our body heats up number one, but number two um, is think of it, our digestive fire, those acids and enzymes, like a fire, an actual fire. And if you pour cold water, water on a fire before trying to light it, <laughs> then it's not going to burn very effectively. So if you sip warm water during meals or wine, if you prefer, uh, of course, after five o'clock, <laughs> uh, that will enhance your digestive effectiveness. Also, eating to 75% full will do a similar thing, kind of like uh, your washing machine or dryer for that matter. If you stuff it to 100% full, does your clothes get clean or dry for that matter? So our digestive system is very much the same. If we slow down from the beginning of the meal and savor what we're eating, we will notice when we get to 75% full. And, and then if we can sit to digest for a little while, it'll all just uh, land better and we won't have quite so many uh, ill effects, perhaps like uh, burning indigestion or uh, the like. So now moving on to some sleep hygiene for exquisite sleep. And Stody had some some good ideas there and also to invite the idea of starting early, like at least an hour before you want to go to bed, like turning off electricity. So one of the things I love about these power outages is, and you probably resonate with that if you're in an effective area, affected area, is that you probably go to sleep earlier and you get more sleep. And Part of that is also the electricity um, messes with our circadian rhythm. So whether you're watching a movie or even have the light on to read, you're stimulating your mind, which makes it more difficult to fall asleep. So if we light candles, that is, is just a softer light that invites rest sooner. As well, nutmeg in warm milk or nut milk, any kind of alternative milk, uh, or even hot water if you like. But nutmeg is, one, an aphrodisiac. Number two, it's also a nervine sedative. And so that's a really nice sort of, I mean, my mother taught that to me pretty early on as well, and then learned it in school years later. So 
And you see on the bottom right here, I am demonstrating a, a restorative pose called legs up the chair. If you are in a place that you would like to just lay down and listen for the rest of this um, and kick your legs up a chair, I would highly recommend that. Ten minutes in this pose is like a three-hour nap to your nervous system because your legs are lifted above your heart. The only contraindication for that is unmedicated high blood pressure. Um, uh, the term for nutmeg, I see... Uh, Nervine sedative, uh, a nervous system sedative. So um, perhaps if you are on uh, anti, hmm, what am I thinking? Um, if you have seizures, n nervine sedative might not be the, you know, a great thing to to be on. But um, just a little pinch of it, I don't think it's going to cause harm. It's not a, a medical dose. So. Um, yeah, kicking your legs up a chair and just you'll you'll feel your spine elongate, your your back press into the floor, and it's also safe to do while you're on uh, your monthly cycle. Another few ideas that we've all heard probably before, but of course the challenge is to try any one of these. So just as you're reading this or seeing this, think what resonates with you. What are you most likely to do if you have an extra five or ten minutes before bed, uh, or and just to help you ease into bed, taking a bath, meditating, massage your body with oil. I have to say this is a really key thing because massaging with oil helps, uh, first of all, because our skin is fat-soluble, oil uh, will absorb better as opposed to um, lotion, which is water-based and sort of saps moisture from our skin and makes us more dependent on on the product ultimately so um, massaging with especially warm oil and then taking a bath your pores open up in uh, in the warm water to allow the oil to absorb more deeply and then sort of the excess oil washes off and you get out being uh, less greasy otherwise you might want to have a pair of like oily clothes that you put on for bed so to protect your sheets as far as daily activities, uh, starting your day with hot water, lemon, and honey before coffee is a great idea or before your, your meal. It stimulates your digestive system. And what I can't say enough about this, uh, especially is because I've had a couple clients who've had some really strange digestive complaints that just a week of integrating this almost totally cured with one person and with the other person totally cured. Um, just very, very strange digestive complaints. So this, this is a fabulous idea, as well as everybody knows to exercise, right? But stretching, like even right now, you just try tipping your head to one side and take a breath. And then the other side. Exhale and inhale. Even something that simple that takes 10 seconds is going to support a better uh, better productivity and better feeling while you're while you're working which leads us to loving what we do and ultimately i think vanessa is going to lead us into a lot more about the how to bring yourself to any of these ideas but ultimately if we use it as a way to cultivate our self-care then um, then these are successful and if we can also be gentle with ourselves and others that is a great, great thing. Lengthening the exhale, Dodi was talking about how that stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. One way to do that, especially with kids, is to try blowing bubbles. Lots of people have been okay. hearing this. We, or we hmm? have bubbles here at on site. Yes, so on the Let's table try that and right on now. site. We have bubbles on the right table. Now. Go ahead and grab try it. Try it. One of your one of your bubbles, one of your people there, try it and then pass it on. E even the ladies who I work with at jail in the jail are able to understand how relaxing, lengthening the exhale is. Even you know, though you might think some of the gals in jail might be a little bit less sensitive, perhaps than other people. Right away, they get how that just helps to ground them. So 
Uh, if you haven't already, just grab one of those bubbles and take a deep breath in, maybe through your nose and exhale, pursing your lips. And, and do it in a way that is not causing you to get too excited. You know, um, sometimes holding the breath in or out can, can heighten the sense of anxiety. So just do what is, is easy for you. But lengthening the exhale a little bit longer uh, is, is a great idea. Our Another crowd is very excited about the bubbles. I just want you to know. <laughs> I'm so excited. Go. Sorry, uh, go ahead. And Keep I'm, going. I'm glad that you were able to get that for everybody. Uh, another idea is because when we get triggered, um, that prefrontal cortex has jumped offline and we are triggered back to our limbic system, limbic brain, fight or flight reaction, we are not reacting to the present moment anymore. We are now in our past. We are uh, imagining that we are in the face of maybe our first person uh, who traumatized us. And so we need to unhijack our brain to get us back to the present moment. And one great way to do that is just bringing awareness to hands and feet. Like uh, I think Dodie mentioned that too, rapid uh, reset, pressing our hands together on a wall, on our legs, pressing the feet into the floor. And my last slide is uh, basically because Trauma is, we can do all of these things for ourselves to, to care for ourselves, but ultimately the quality of our relationships, particularly with our, our close family, friends, and coworkers, is what is going to support people to resolve trauma more than anything and to help us feel safe and to keep that prefrontal thinking brain online. Uh, and that includes self-care for relational health, meaning uh, re maintaining relationships with others who make us feel good, help us feel restored, and mirror our strengths. And, and it means also that we have a sense of significance and belonging with others in a group. And um, I wanted to mention, too, um, also an idea for de-escalation, going back to the last slide, um, might be that I didn't mention here, like an aroma corner, to have a couple aromas either in your pocket or in a corner in the room for kids to go to when they're feeling uh, super excitable. One is because aromas bypass that thinking brain and go straight to the limbic brain and can help people de-escalate quickly. So some calming and uh, grounding, Scents would be something sweet like jasmine or grounding like vetiver or frankincense or myrrh. Not everybody's into patchouli, but um, that, that can work too, or uh, sandalwood. And a really lovely one to help reconnect people to the heart uh, that is cooling, so especially during the summer, is rose, although that's very pricey. And you do get what you pay for with essential oils. Um, but some uplifting ones, if you work with some kids who are constantly stuck in parasympathetic freeze or just, you know, especially teenagers, some uplifting scents like citrus, bergamot, grapefruit, mandarin are some lovely ways to just think, uh, think of those things and, and uh, be a little bit more happy in general. And uh, last thing about how to integrate these uh, once a week. Yeah, adding one idea per week and then doing it every day at a regular time of day is going to be the best idea to um, to actually make a difference and not just have this presentation go in one ear and out the other. Pick one thing from that list of, of prevention that Dodie gave you and try to do it every day at a regular time this week. And, and then the next week, you can, if you're about 75% successful, and it's not overwhelming you, then add another thing to do, maybe at a different time, but um, you know, building the quality of your morning will give you the quality of your day. Building the quality of your evening is gonna give you your quality of sleep. And so however you do, use it to cultivate your calm, and then we can mirror that and share that with the people that we work with all day and continue to build a, a healthy, ripple effect throughout uh, all of the families that we work with. So Skylar, with that, um, I just want to mention my website. 
holistictraumarecovery.org, and I usually do a, a monthly webinar, just uh, you know, 15 to 20 minutes of uh, ideas, and then I will will have some videos for sale pretty soon for some longer uh, longer talks in a couple months. So, uh, thank you so question. much. Thank you so much, Skylar. Somebody had a question about um, what did you call nutmeg? You used a term to describe it. A I, I think I explained that already. Um, a nervine sedative, but nervine uh, sedative. Okay, that was the question. Yeah. All right, thank yeah. you so much, Skylar. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, you have her the website nervine, in your PowerPoint is, as well. Yeah, it's at the beginning of my PowerPoint. Holistic trauma recovery. Yes. All right, thank you so much. Thank All you. All right. Very Thank you, Skylar. All right, we have our last but not least, our presenter, Vanessa Compton, is going to take us home with her self-care presentation. Yay, Vanessa! Oh, <laughs> oh my lanta. All right, let's make sure we can, everybody can hear you. Oh, can everyone hear me? I don't have to do this the whole time, do no, I? No, no, no. <laughs> can the remote sites hear Vanessa? Vanessa, test oh. again. Testing, testing. Can you hear me? Did I not turn this thing on right? You're on. Oh. Okay. Let's not start this with severe awkwardness and cuss words, right, guys? For those of you that really know me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yes. Shaking, trembling, and terrified. I'm going to do this. And I do have to read, wear my reading glasses, so I won't be able to really see you guys, but I need to see my story. So, so it's all good, right? Um, so I'm Vanessa Compton, a peer personal services coordinator with Amador County Behavioral Health. Um, I have this great plan to do this little talk today about self-care on a peer level. Um, and then this morning, I like had this great thought to switch things up a little bit. So I'm going to scare myself even more. Why not, right? Um, so my self-care is actually kind of a little bit different. Um, these things, I want to thank Dodie and Skylar. Those were amazing, and I wrote a whole bunch of those down, so if they can hear me and see me, those things are awesome. Um, I practiced some, and a lot of them were really new to me, so I think we should all kind of um, take those things and, and run with them. They sound great. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm going to start with this random thing that popped into my head this morning about... Um, and, it, and it's not a weird, awkward thing, but it's kind of my birth story. It's, not, it's something my mom shares with me every year on my birthday. Um, the day I was born, you know, the nurses took me off to do their thing, and then they brought me back a little later. And she tells me this every year, and why it occurred to me this morning, I was like, oh, aha moment. Um, they, they brought me back to her and laid me, you know, on my stomach, on her stomach, and my mom says and swears that I lifted up my head and I smiled at her. Which, I mean, that is, that's like, it's touching, it's beautiful, it's like miracle. I mean, maybe it was some little birth nerves going on there. But looking back over, you know, my life, um, I think that was my first sign of resilience. I think that was maybe a first sign that I was going to be okay. I was strong, motivated, driven. I'm also going to have to drink water during this. <laughs> mm. So yeah, everyone can see me shaking. I'm like, oh my gosh. So a couple of people in the room who really know me have permission to remind me to breathe because I often forget to breathe. <laughs> um, so today, what I'm gonna talk to you about is self-care for the soul. And hopefully these nerves go away, otherwise I'll just run away crying and we can all talk about that at our next meeting that we're all gonna be at. <laughs> um, so self-care for the soul, like I said, it's a little bit different. Um, Pieces of what I'm going to talk about are based on a workshop, a self-empowerment workshop, that as a peer, a person with lived experience who's been through some stuff in life, um, I built this to empower myself. Whoops, I don't want to cover my microphone. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, to empower myself and to empower others and kind of let people know that it's going to be okay. So this is my version of self-care. So... Um, I invite you today to be present with me, open-minded, um, uh, aware of my nerves and my stressors. So um, what, what does self-care mean to you guys? Does anybody have an idea? I know we kind of got to talk about that. Um, what does self-care look like? Even if you could just shout out a couple things to me. Oh, they can't shout out. Oh, 
No, because our online people want to hear. Well, let's just, does anybody have anything that they do for self-care? I was just going to say prioritizing myself, my health. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. I could lean my microphone on. Breathing and being focused on my present condition, which means mental, physical. That's great. You know, surroundings. That's really great. I make lists to organize my mind because nice. if it's not written down in order, um, my mind looks more like a whirlwind sometimes. Right. <laughs> um, so it doesn't sound like self-care. It sounds like a, a task, but it actually helps to calm me. To, yeah, um, absolutely. To very clearly written ways yeah. I have to do. And then there's my pajama days. Nice. <laughs> pajama day. That's awesome. <laughs> So for me, I'm constantly going and going and going. And Vanessa, you know this. I know. Um, <laughs> my life does not sit still. It, it doesn't. It's nonstop, and it's very full. I don't use the word busy, but it's very full. So I just sit still. When oh, I sit nice. still, it's like okay, I can breathe. I calm myself and just be still. I think your breathing right now is helping me. I think Christy's kind of breathing <laughs> some some calmness into me. Those are, those are amazing. And some of us have things, you know, about the bubble, you know, a bubble bath with candles and, you know, the, some of the other fun stuff like shopping or binge watching Netflix and things like that. My, my personal favorite self-care is once in a while a hot date night with Ben and Jerry's. I don't know if anybody ever, ever's had one of those. Um, so those are the kind of things that, you know, sometimes we have these beautiful, healthy self-care things. And other times we have things that are just kind of more like, okay, I need this, I need to cut loose and do something, buy shoes or you know something like that. So like I said, I invite you to be fully present and open-minded because this is a little bit of a different talk and it's the very first time I've ever presented this in this way outside of my workshop. That's where the terror comes in. If I was sitting down with you guys and we were talking, I think I'd be fine. Oh, okay. So I have to ask for them to be unmuted. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Got it. Oh, more for me, more for me to remember, guys. All the fear just got really legitimate, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Thanks. The encouragement in here is like phenomenal i mean it really it's very humbling and i'm so honored that that you guys showed up and that our remote people are here with me as well um and now i'm going to try to remember when to change my slides i asked to do this myself and you know um i think i'm okay uh so another question and these i'm going to have questions and these are things to ask yourselves you don't necessarily have to answer them out loud but you can if you'd like to um Ask yourself what you're like when you're taking care of yourself. What am I like when I'm taking care of myself? Um, you can write these, I believe the PowerPoint is in the handout, so you don't have to write the question down, but maybe just, maybe take one minute. What am I like? Um, some things might be when I'm taking care of myself, I'm happy, I'm energetic, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm confident. Uh, so, and, and it's gonna be your terms, not what I say, but I mean, those are just some ideas that you might think of to acknowledge what you're like when you're taking care of yourself. Hmm. Oh yeah, I'm on a time limit, huh? I'm just gonna keep moving. <laughs> I didn't get one. <laughs> this is a learning opportunity. Um, somebody would just tell me like, quickly oh yeah okay we got this so today what I'm talking about is self-care for the soul and what this is is a mindset and it's an internal dialogue um, that we have with ourselves on a daily basis and yes I'm gonna read so forgive me <laughs> just we can look at the slides um, the thing about this self-care for the soul it can't be bought given to us or found externally but the beauty of it is that it can be shared um, every moment of every day in every interaction we have with ourselves and others. So throughout my talk today, um, 
I am gonna ask you to ask yourself some important questions. Like I said, we don't have to go over those in here. These are things for you internally to talk about. Um, I do want these questions to be thought provoking, deep, and maybe even a little bit uncomfortable. This is something I have to do with myself to get real and honest with myself about maybe why I'm lacking in self-care. Maybe something's going on in there that's stopping me from taking care of myself. Um, self-care for the soul requires a level of self-awareness and accountability um, that might require some internal processing within us. This, this is me, this is, this is the deep stuff, the real stuff. Um, self-awareness, accountability, those things might require change. Um, rethinking the way we look at ourselves and talk to ourselves. Um, so the work we're about to do here might not be easy, but it'll be worth it. It's the hard stuff, becoming real, authentic, vulnerable to our core, unlearning things that have not served us to this point in our lives. Um, we can do hard things, right guys? Okay, I need some kind of chatter or something. <laughs> so the first, the, sorry, the next questions I have for you to ask yourself, and can the remote sites see these so they can ask, wonderful, wonderful. Um, ask yourself, how are things working out for me? Right here, right now, how are things working out for me in my life? This could be a big scope thing, this could be a little thing. It's completely up to you. Um, how do I want to see things work out for me? These are things I have to ask myself sometimes on a daily basis, especially right now going through some hormonal life change. I have to rethink everything as I knew it. So I have to ask myself these things. Um, if these things, these answers to these questions require change, how will I approach change? Um, it can be approached kicking and screaming, right? <laughs> sometimes I don't want to change. I don't want to go. I don't want my hormones to change. I don't want my family to change, my kids to grow up my this, my that, whatever that is. Um, so we can approach change kicking and screaming or maybe through, maybe we can just let go of some things. Um, so I have a quote um, that really, really, whoops. If I lose that they can't hear me in the remote sites, let me know, cause I'm, they'll let me know. Oh good, <laughs> okay. Um, so this quote really resonated with me um, when it comes to change and some of the changes that I've had in my life, good, bad, and indifferent. Um, I've found that the changes I feared would ruin me have always become doorways. And on the other side, I have found a more courageous and graceful self. And that is by Elizabeth Lesser. Um, I, I hold on to this. I hold on to this. Some of the some of the changes in my life I didn't choose for myself. You know, I've I've got, um, like I said, I was a peer, a person with lived experience, um, been through some, some interesting things, um, definitely take pride in the resilience that I show through all of that, um, but all of it has required change in my life. And I think sometimes it's how I look at that change. Um, so for me and some of you in the room, change is inevitable, growth is optional. We can choose to grow through that change. We can, we can look at ourselves on a different level, a different perspective. And I mean, I hope everyone's making the connection with self-care and why I called this self-care for the soul, because this goes to a different place. This goes to a place in our heart, our soul, something that we can't always externally grab onto, or maybe, you know, maybe we don't know where to find the information on how to get to all this. So um, one thing I'm going to share with you is something I did learn a long time ago. Um, I found the secret to happiness. I literally know the secret to happiness. Um, some of you might already know this. And for some of you, this might be the best kept secret ever. Is everybody ready? Everybody listening? I know you're listening because you're all so quiet. It's making me crazy. <laughs> like it's terrifying me. Okay. You might want to write this down. The secret to happiness is Lower your expectations, okay? We're all up here. We're all up here. We're all in this work. We're we're trying to exceed. Oh, and I have another part that's not on the side. And let that shit go because I didn't want to put a cuss word on there because <laughs> there might be somebody looking at this and I don't want to get in trouble. I am on a work time thing here. So that's not in your slide because, you know, county employment. Um, but really, really, I mean, we place these expectations on ourselves and on others that are sometimes impossible to meet and they can be detrimental if the bar is set too high. We're constantly chasing something we may never obtain. 
Um, there's nothing wrong with having goals and dreams and passions and wanting to reach for the stars. There's nothing wrong with that, but our expectations can often set us up for failure. I'm one of those people. I can't meet my expectations. Maybe that's why I was so scared today to have this expectation that I am Brene Brown already. I am up here doing that thing. I've got some books. I've got Netflix. Okay, right? So I got to lower those. I'm Vanessa Compton in Amador County doing the best I can every day, right? So, huh? That's enough. That's enough, right? So setting our expectations too high can definitely be detrimental. And as part of self-care, if we lower those, if we put those down to meet ourselves where we're at, I can see the value how that is caring for ourselves. Um, another little quote, when you release expectations, you're free to enjoy things for what they are instead of what you think they should be. So I, I, I hope this is resonating with some people in the room. I'm gonna take another sip of water here. <laughs> And our people on the room. And our people on the Oh my gosh. I'm, you don't have to pull that. Oh, I can't. Don't. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. It's nothing personal. Hi, guys. I see you. <laughs> oh, no. And I see myself. They weren't supposed to do that to me. <laughs> so now I'm going to talk a little bit about letting go of expectation and attachment as a form of self care. We expect ourselves and others to behave in certain ways. We've attached unachievable measures to what we think we should be doing and how others should be living their lives. Attachment is not connection. And what we need right here, right now, is connection more than ever. Connection to ourselves, each other, and our community. Another reason why, professionally, those of you, a lot of you that know me, I do what I do, is to create that connection within each other and the community that we live and work in. Attach versus connected. I want to talk about these things. Um, uh, a friend of mine once sent me a little, I don't know if it's a quote, I don't know what it is, um, <laughs> but she happens to be in the room. She sent me something about attachment and connection. It was when we first met and started engaging in conversations, and I didn't understand or know the difference. So when I think of self-care, I think of connection being connected. And the meanings I've put in your slides, um, are what I feel and what I think when I think of connection versus attachment. Being connected, I feel like it's something I'm wanting. I feel light and freeing and liberating, belonging, flowing, fulfilling, intentional, aware, and choice, that I have a choice. Attachment to me, which trust me, I have been attached to so many things in my life that have kept me stuck, they've kept me afraid, they've kept me weak. Um, the feelings I associate with those needing heavy, clinging, confining, desperation, suffocating, forced, empty, stuck, obligated. I mean, the list could go on, but I really, really wanted to show and have something tangible when we talk about attachment and connection, what the difference is. And if we're feeling attached rather than connected, that's looking at what kind of self-care do we need? Do we need to do the things the other ladies were talking about? Um, do we need to read up on the subject? Because I'm not an expert. These are just small things, small bits that I've taken that have kind of helped me through my life. So ask yourself, am I attached or connected? Which one am I? Am I attached or am I connected? We don't, I feel that we don't own anything in this world, you know, those attachments, those things we cling to for dear life, we don't own those things. They're right now, they could be owning us. That could be material things, thoughts, anything in our life that we feel some of those feelings. And you're free to list your own feelings on connection and attachment too. How do you feel if you're connected as opposed to attached? Um, so do ask yourself, am I attached or connected? What attachments can I let go of? And the saying that my friend had said to me was attached to nothing, connected to everything. And, and that, I mean, really was one of the most beautiful things that anyone has ever said to me in my life. Someday it will be a tattoo for my tattooed friends in the room. Go, Christy. <laughs> but I, I mean, really, to, it's just so significant. It speaks to my heart. It speaks to my self-care. It speaks to all of those things. Does anybody have questions so far? I'm just going along. We're listening. We're doing good. Okay. Remote sites? Remote sites? Any questions? Okay. <laughs> okay. So 
what I want to validate and let you all know, and I want you to fully accept this, is that we are all doing the best that we can. Now, for somebody like me, that's really hard to see that sometimes. I actually have to have a sticky note on my desk and at home and sometimes in my car that tells me I am doing the best that I can right here, right now, in this moment, um, with everything in my life. Um, so we need to see that in everyone, in every interaction that we have. Um, everyone, everyone in this room is absolutely doing the best that they can. And sometimes that is hard to accept if we're, you know, up here with those, with those high achieving goals and those things. What if we move that back down and we're sitting right here where we're at and we're like, I am doing the best I can. Whether it's in a relationship or with a food program or living our, our lives differently or our career and our job. What if we just embrace and accept that, that everyone is doing the best that they can. Um, even our spouses, our children, our relatives, friends, coworkers, and our bosses, right? What if we're all doing the best that we can? Um, oh, and ourselves, don't forget ourselves. <laughs> so these are the questions to ask yourself on that. Am I meeting people where they are? This is something I have struggled with. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make myself super vulnerable. Um, I haven't been able to meet my own expectation. That's one reason I'm talking about these things because they're not perfected in my life. Sometimes these are my dreams, my goals. These are where I want to be in my life. So am I meeting people where they are? If somebody talks to me in a certain way and I think, oh my gosh, that person is just such a jerk. They're mean, they're not nice. Well, I have no clue what's going on with them and I need to meet them where they are. Um, be understanding, compassionate. Um, can I accept that I'm doing the best I can and in turn see that in others? I've struggled with that. That could be a trauma response. I've learned that. It can be a trauma response. You're used to people letting you down. You're not feeling safe. And that's okay. But the person that I am now who has healed and gotten help and done all the work, these are things that I strive to. Meeting people where they're at, accepting that I am doing absolutely the best that I can and seeing that in others. So in trauma-informed care, we talk, talk about changing the lens that we see the world through from what's wrong with you to what's happened to you. What if we use that same lens as part of self-care? What if when we, um, every interaction we have with ourselves and others is seen through a lens of compassion, understanding, empathy, curiosity, forgiveness, and love? Um, what if part of self-care is being a non-judgmental observer of our own thoughts? our own lives, choices, actions, um, a non-judgmental observer of the lives, choices, and actions of others? Um, what if we fully allow ourselves and others to make mistakes and then to make amends? I mean, you know, this to me, this is that self-care for the soul. We get into all this mushy stuff. What if we spend our lives being gentle, patient, kind, and loving towards ourselves and others? Um, so self-care to me is very trauma-informed in this way. It is that lens, and like I said, forgive me, I can't see y'all are blurry with my reading glasses on. <laughs> so if you're open and ready for this concept, self-care for the soul, I want you to know that this is my definition of grace, the highest and most influential form of grace that there is. This is how I see this type of self-care in my life. Um, Giving ourselves this gift of grace allows us to let go of the control we thought we had, which we know nothing is in control, right? Everybody in this room, nothing's in our control. We absolutely know that. And some of us might be like control freaks holding on to things for dear life. Um, but yeah, nothing's in control. Nothing. <laughs> it is all beyond our control. It is in someone else's hands somewhere, whether that belief is God, the creator, the universe, nothing is in our control. Um, and knowing that, it allows us to hold space for ourselves and others. I don't know if people have heard of holding space. I kind of like this little buzz phrase. Um, I have a definition of holding space that I can read to you. Holding space means to be with someone without judgment, to donate your ears and heart without wanting anything back, to practice empathy and compassion, to accept someone's truth no matter what they are, to allow and accept. So, some more questions to ask yourself. How can you hold space for yourself and how can you hold space for others? 
I think I just learned about holding space and it was it was the most one of the most beautiful things I had ever heard of. It was so brand new to me. So some of you might have been doing this stuff for like 20 years already, but so really, I mean if you have comments or questions or or you know anything like that and the remote site too if if you want to know more, <laughs> please let me know. <laughs> That's funny because right now nobody else is talking but me. My husband jokes with me about the Vanessa show. So this is making me feel, I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, that's what, and it was not meant to be very nice because it was about some of my control issues. So I'm thinking, oh, he was so wrong. I'm like, I'm going to have to tell him, oh, there's a Vanessa show. It's on YouTube now because nobody else is saying anything. <laughs> Oh shoot, I didn't number my slides. I don't know which slide I'm on now. Oh, that's the right one? Oh, okay. And now I'm supposed to move to the next one. If I would, I color coded my stuff, like really, I was like so OCD about doing this right. Maybe I should just joke around and say a few cuss words and then it'll be much easier for all of us. <laughs> So today I want you to be graceful. I'm getting towards the end of my presentation. Um, be graceful in your self-talk and the way you speak to and about others. And when you speak about yourself or others, ask yourself these three questions. Is it true, is it necessary, and is it kind? I didn't make that up, by the way. So, I mean, just to let you know, I didn't give credit. I think it's like Socrates or something. But if you come to my workshop, I do give credit where credit is due. Most of this stuff is from somewhere else. So, so when you're too busy to find grace and hold space, which we know busy is overrated, I think the other ladies really clarified that we need to stop and slow down, take care of ourselves. So busy, so busy that we can't possibly do it all or even see straight. Um, what I'd like you to do is slow down, even stop for a moment, stop and ask yourself these questions. Who is important to me and what is important to me? Because sometimes I think we get separated from this. I know I do. I get so focused on what I'm doing at work, whose lives I'm trying to save, I'm trying to change the world, I want social justice, I want equality, I want it all, and I am so consumed by all of that that I'm not taking care of myself, and I need to know who is important to me, I'm important to me, because if I'm not taking care of myself, I can't take care of all the other people out there that I have chosen to serve in my job. Um, what's important to me? What is important to me? The way other people feel about themselves, the way I make other people feel about themselves is important to me. So for me to stay in that in my self-care is very, very important. So I, I like these questions and I think they are, some of them are kind of tough. Um, so we must believe in ourselves to understand the power of our influence in our self-care for good, social change, the ability to be inclusive, acceptance and integrity. So don't adapt to the energy in the room. This is a quote, I make this up. Influence the energy in the room. I feel like I have to clarify that. My daughter that's in college, she's, mom, you need quotation marks some stuff. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> so, so I'm learning. Um, but our influence, our influence by taking care of ourselves in these ways, in our soul, going down to our core of who we are, who we wanna be, these things can have so much influence, not just in this room, but out in our community, in our agencies, in everywhere that we go and we serve and we help people. So a couple more, your last questions. How can I influence those around me? And what example do I want to set for positive change? And I know it's hard. I'm, I'm telling you guys, I know it's not easy. I know it's never going to look perfect. I stand up here shaking and, you know, terrified telling you it's not going to be perfect. But that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And my last quote on here, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. And that is Marianne Williamson, and I put my quotation marks. <laughs> Woo! So continue with your self-care, all those great things you're doing, um, especially those things that set your soul on fire. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Oh my God, I turned awesome. Wasn't she awesome? Wasn't she awesome? Everybody is. Woo! So now is the fun part of our morning, where you guys get to work together. The folks at the remote sites, if you would work together, I need the clicker, here we go. Um, we are going to take all this information and again as usual it's a lot of information Oops. 
Kyla was supposed to go after Vanessa. So let me move forward through the slides. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I want to go to the end. Oh, sorry, thank you. You saw it before me, now I've got all the way to the end. <laughs> all right. Okay, hold on. Okay, so we're gonna take, we're a little, um, um, we're a little behind, but that's A-OK. -okay. So it's 11.40, we're gonna work for um, until 12.05. <laughs> um, and we're gonna talk about these questions. So. We learned a lot about self-care, how we can take care of ourselves, how it helps us influence others. What I want you to think about now is how can you take these self-care concepts and make them as accessible to as many people as possible, both in our communities and in our agencies. So not just you know, within ourselves, but also the people we serve and our general communities. What barriers exist and what can we do to level the playing field? And, 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 and I'm very concrete. That's my middle name, Barbara Concrete De Lorenzo De Graff. But I think about when um, Skylar spoke of the idea of eating organic. And she said, you know, it's a barrier, it's expensive. And she suggested people could plant a garden. What came to mind for me was, what about a community garden? Wouldn't that be the coolest thing? Because it has so many levels and layers of working together and building community. So think about in the next, until 12.05, um, these questions are remote sites. If you wanna answer different questions, I, I invite you to think about what resonates for your community. We'll come back together at 12.05 and do a quick report out, and then we'll do our evaluations and move uh, to closing. But let's start now on that, and uh, we'll come back together at 12.05. All morning. Um, our Inyo County remote site took off, but they left us a whole list of ideas. So what I'm asking for folks is to think about from your group, share one barrier that you identified and any ideas for making self-care concepts accessible to the community members or staff. So what did we hear from Inyo County? And I will be writing this down and I will send all this out to you guys after the event. Shane? Okay, so they had some really good um, ideas. They had self-care ideas, they had mommy and me exercise groups. Probation has three gardens for youth across oh, the county. That. That's great. Um, they share ideas at staff meetings. I like the idea too of maybe making something like a regular part of a staff meeting, you know, that you always, you know, somebody can bring something or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. In our staff groups, we do a lot of, um, like we do book clubs. So we yes. read a book together and then, and then talk about them or maybe folks find an article that's interesting and share it. So mm -hmm. yeah, share, sharing written mm -hmm. things is nice. Um, they have a whole bunch of stuff. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, integrate them into workshops. Uh huh. Integrate self care into workshops. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. Um, having handouts for clients mm -hmm. or families. Mm -hmm. We want to teach uh, young young kids and and role model for them too uh, mm -hmm. self care topics. Mm -hmm. I often say when you work with older kids in particular, you want to say things like, "I went to bed at eight o'clock last night. I was so tired. I really needed to go get a really good night's <laughs> sleep." You know, to make to make that okay, good, like yeah. the healthy things that you do right. to take care of yourself. Yep. Uh, what else? They really liked the rapid reset examples, mm -hmm. um, especially the tactile ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and teaching teaching youth and parents those skills. Mm -hmm. They had some discussion around um, what does our future look like, I think, as a staff team. I think that's what the discussion was. Uh, she said, our workforce will not be skills-based, but personal abilities based 
like using empathy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kids and families need those skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they also discussed how technology is change is changing communication, um, and using kind of Basically. using some limiting mm -hmm. policies in in schools and other places so that people aren't on their on yes. their phones all the time. They had a great. Um, I can't remember, it might have been on ACES Connection, which I would really encourage everyone to join if you're not already a member. I know Amador has a resilient Amador. We have our um, Sierra uh, community on ACES Connection, but they give great information. And there was a picture of a teen uh, you know, crying into her pillow with the phone next to her. You know, Because a lot of times teens and adults look at these Facebook and think it's real life that everyone's happy all the time and why am i unhappy and and, it, and you can never get away from it you know there's it's relentless mm -hmm. all right anything else from inyo um that last piece was kind of limiting technology so we can teach some more critical thinking skills yes yeah. okay all right all right and now how about if we can talk to our folks in mono county we haven't heard from our remote site, thank you for sticking with us. I know it's not easy being Hi. a remote site. Hi, Hi, can you hear us? Hi, we can. We hear you loud and clear. Welcome. I was going to say, so one of the barriers we were talking about is how um, widespread we are for our geographical region. Yeah. Um, it, it's pretty difficult to be able to get parents that are two hours away from us yeah. or something in Mammoth, for, like, per se. So that yeah. was our barrier, but one of the thoughts we had for just ex making it accessible is just to continue to disseminate information, whether that's we're going to Starbucks for coffee, so we've got this great poster for a workshop for parents that we can mm -hmm. post there or uh -huh. in the ones, you know, area. Going, like, sharing the resources in areas that have um, high, traffic. high foot traffic. So like the post yeah. office, our coffee shops, um, yeah like our grocery stores, places that people go quite often um, was one thing that we were really thinking to be able to share, like, hey, you know, Behavioral Health is putting on one of their um, self-care yogas, making uh -huh. sure that that's really known in the community. And then also piggybacking on the things we're already doing, like we have <laughs> um, play groups that Zoraya and I run for parents with small children. And while we're at those play groups, talking about some self-care ideas, Yes. bringing to the attention of the people in the structures that we already have within mm -hmm. our communities. So just adding, kind of layering these things into the progress that we're already making mm -hmm. to make them more effective and accessible to mm -hmm. everyone. Yes. Perfect. Excellent. And also, um, I, I was talking about ACES Connection. I don't know if Mono County has an ACES Connection. I, I don't think you have a community, but it may be something to look at. Um, as a way to start building a community around trauma-informed care. So if you have any interest in that, I do have a connection for that. So, But it is then just another thing you have to do, which can become stressful in and of itself. So, All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks for joining us. Hope you, hope you enjoyed it. And, well, and we'll hear now from our folks in Jackson. So I'm going to have my on-site Oprah with the... But not nearly as rich. Uh-huh. Almost, but not quite. Oh, is, is Tammy still like there? Does she have anything to add? Oh. <clears throat> Sorry you got me. I got my mouth full. Um, <laughs> ah! Thank you. All right, Tammy, go ahead. I'm sorry, I forgot you. Oh, no, no, I was here. I got distracted because... Um, the sheriff um, pulled up and a bunch of guys got out and swarmed the house across the street. So it was a little. Oh my gosh! It was a little distracting. Wow! <laughs> but I was here. I listened. It was awesome. Thank you, Barb. Thank you, Tammy. So, any ideas that you have for challenges you want to share? I liked what I just heard about layering it into what you're already doing. Right. The parent groups you're already leading in the classes. Yes. I'm yes. going to strive for that. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, that's all I've got. 
And I'm glad you had power today. Oh yeah, for now. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna start sharing in Jackson now. So stay, hang with us, see what we learn. All right, here's Oprah. I didn't talk about this in our group, but um, I think using humor is a really great way to affect change because I think it's such, we do such heavy work. And yes. it's a heavy load we carry, or if not humor, at least light, a little bit lighter approach sometimes helps. So I um, um, run the uh, Resilient Amateur Group here in Amateur County mm -hmm. and coordinate that. And I send out reminders every month about our meetings. And this month I found, um, thanks to Vanessa, I found um, some self-care according to the house you sort into Harry Potter fans and it, it's always there's Slytherin and Hufflepuff and so I sent that out as an attachment with the reminder about our next meeting and I got so many responses back where usually when every month they send out that reminder nobody responds they're like yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so it was so nice to be able to engage in a light-hearted way about self-care because each house is talking about if you're you know if you're Slytherin how do you do self-care because you know they've got kind of a bad reputation but they have their own methods right so and it was just such a it was a nice way to um for me leading this and and collaborating with others to do this in a way that can be more fun because i think our work is not always fun so and that's something that would really appeal to kids um so maybe if you i'll, I'll touch base with you tracy you can share it with me and i can share it with the whole with everybody great thank you so when we do trauma-informed care training we often talk about fun with trauma Yes, fun with trauma. That's you know, right. Where we That's spend right. a whole day talking about traumatic events and how do we kind of lighten that up and make it make it not quite so scary. Who else would like to share? Oh, awesome. A few things we talked about was, um, and I think this was her example. They tell a like a good-hearted story or something happy uh, at the end of their meetings. I think oh, it would nice. be good. We all attend a lot of meetings. Maybe somebody from each, you know, maybe each month that could say, hey, this is a good story or, you know, a mom told me this helped or whatever and kind of end the meeting that way. So mm -hmm. I know um, and letting people know the work that we're doing is, is helping. That's and great. Do have anything else? I like the idea of the playgroups. Our playgroups are really well attended in the Amador County. I think it would be awesome to give some moms some self-care tips since they already come mm -hmm. and they tend to come on a regular basis. So I think Mono County, that was great. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think one of the barriers was um, distance and yes. um, people, you know, if we were going to do something like community, we talked about how it's probably have to, like a garden, have to be like at each individual community, not having something centrally located, hard for people to get here. Um, and then also, you know, like organic produce, those kinds of things, hard yes. for people to do. So, yeah. Well, and that's one of the things I'm hoping that when we have our fourth learning community, um, and we talk about technology, you know, how we can use technology in our work and make it accessible, that we can try to integrate some of these ideas in because, yeah, it's, it, it can be negative in that it's relentless, but it can also be positive in that it's relentless. So, you know, you can really uh, touch a lot of people through technology. Yes, exactly, exactly, right, right. Um, so I, I try to always keep that in mind as we go to that last one of the year. How do we put everything together, you know? Would you like to share? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so our group, we agree, I think, with pretty much everything else that's mm -hmm. been said, too. Um, more, uh, some of the ideas that our group came up with are uh, monthly self-care days. Mm -hmm. So whether designated or just um, sort of self-prescribed. Um, but that could be for schools um, because a lot of what we came up with were around children. Uh, mm -hmm. But schools or workplaces. Yeah. Um, and then specifically for schools, teach kids these techniques um, and the, the um, physical kind of soothing methods. Yes. You know, what yes. you did with your hands, where you put your hands, mm -hmm. touching your heart, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, because it's accessible to every child. And once it's taught, it can be used. Um, over and over, yeah. Yeah, self motivating. Um, also, we thought about doing uh, more self care with prenatal classes. Nice. Because it's both parents for one. Mm -hmm. um, and often there are other children at home. So, yeah. um, you know, sometimes pregnancy is a little stressful. Yes. So, um, 
I'm spotting that correctly. To catch it. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out what my note meant. Uh, now you. <laughs> oh, 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 so I wrote teach it means knowing it. So that was about um, parents. Yes, about, that's great. Oh, about parents being able to, that anytime you teach something, you have to know it. Yes. So it's like double, you get double. Bonus. Yes. So, um, and then that kind of went to maybe some buddy systems. Yeah. Um, buddy systems that could be in, obviously, with school settings. You can mm -hmm. do that with home settings too. Yeah. Um, that you have a, a system in place that, um, you can support each other or, you know, obviously help to acknowledge, I see something going on. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that could work even in the in a professional setting. Yes. With a colleague, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be touchy-feely, it doesn't yeah. have to be too intimate, but um, again, just developing that relationship to mm -hmm. allow the, um, the, of actually, using that concept exactly well i think back to when i was years ago i worked in um in, in the budget office in the state of new jersey i, I called it five years hard time because i was a social worker in budget and it was just like a whole different world taught me a lot but very stressful but i always had a buddy that we'd go on walks at lunch and it was awesome it, just a simple thing and when i was doing that it, you know what we were uh what Dodie was talking about with the three different tiers of self-care or the, I guess it was six tiers, whatever, but so many tiers. I thought about that, and I thought that was such a great way to integrate self-care because we got to talk and laugh and also exercise, and, you know, it was great. So a buddy system is perfect. Find your, find your self-care buddy, your self-care partner. Anybody else have anything they want to add to the discussion? Just to that buddy mm -hmm. um, self-care thing. If you kind of make yourself a rule that you're not going to talk about work when you're out there doing it. Yes. Walk. Yes. That's a great. Yep. Yep. I love that. Yep. That's hard to do. Yes. Lady over here. Mm -hmm. To piggyback onto what Kathy said, um, I have a coworker who's also one of my closest friends. And if we go out to lunch or anything together, we have a condition that the first person to bring up work buys lunch. Nice. That's great. That's great. We should do that when we go out to dinner night before. Um, yeah, that's perfect. I love that. I love that. Any other thoughts before we close for the day? So remember what you were. Oh, we have somebody over here. Be careful. <laughs> One thing that we came up with was setting up the information like in the break room and letting the yes. um, other staff members kind of go through it mm -hmm. and see what might help with them or ideas that m might generate some thought to take back to their classrooms because mm -hmm. um, where I work we have one two three four five classrooms so mm -hmm. we have age groups from 18 months to 12 year olds mm -hmm. so having different information out for them to be able to pick and choose. Then something else we came up with was maybe take some different pieces from the information and putting it in the hand, um, the welcome packets that the parents get. Mm -hmm. That way they can have some ideas for self-help for them. Or mm -hmm. if they have some children that have a few you know, behavioral issues or something, giving them some helpful ideas to be able to teach to their children and us right. practicing it with the, the parent and the child to help yes. calm and soothe and stuff. And that's exactly what it's about is, you know, giving the parents skills that make them not only help them with their own self care, but it helps them be better parents. I mean, that's, I think too, making it okay to make mistakes. Yes. Celebrating mistakes mm -hmm. uh, at a camp. I used to work where I used to work. Um, we just had a rule where if you, if something happened and it went wrong, you'd say, you wouldn't say, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You'd say, whoopsie. Right, because everybody has those whoopsie moments and it's okay, it's okay to make mistakes. I say make different mistakes. Don't make the same mistake over and over again. Right, right. right? Let's and make different ones. We're very good at that. Yes. We are constantly changing our mistakes. We have a hand up. Um, I'm gonna unmute uh, Dina, but Dina, you're self-muted also, so you need to unmute yourself if you wanna <laughs> say something. Some self-care, unmute yourself. You had your hand up, so I'm thinking that you wanna say something. Nope, she took her hand down. <laughs> she said, dang, I didn't want to put my hand up. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the online members will receive an email with 
with with the evaluation oh let's hear what dina has to say scroll down to the bottom i'm with you dina uh confidence and resilience building and um yeah it's thank you dina we and we talked about that confidence Um, so if you all make sure you um, do your um, evaluations, leave them on your way out, eat more food. I know the folks online can't eat food here, but the people here can eat. Take whatever you want back to your offices or to your homes, wherever you want to go. Thank you so much, uh, Courtney and your group, whoever's left. Thank you, Tammy. Um, I'll get your evaluations and hopefully the online folks will get an email with the evaluations. And I will hopefully see you all in February. Have a wonderful holiday season. And tonight, practice one self-care skill that we learned. I'm thinking the bath. That may be mine tonight. You can go in the bath with your child. That might be good. Well, you know, that's what we used to do. Thank you all so much for your time. And we'll see you